Hello, my name is Andre, and I'm a software engineer in Zurich. I'm the technical lead for the TensorFlow Hub project. TensorFlow Hub is a library and a repository for reusing machine learning. We open sourced it last year, and today I'll give you an update on the project. Let's start by talking about when, when you'd want to use it. If you have problems collecting enough data to train your models from scratch, then transfer learning is a technique for you. You can use Hub to make it easy to reuse parts of models that were trained on large parts on large amounts of data. Additionally, since it's so easy to reuse computations and weights, it becomes possible to leverage features without having to learn how to feed them into neural networks. So images, text, and videos are features you can use with a single line of code. You might also have encountered problems where code bases become really coupled and experimentation becomes slower over time. By defining an artifact that does not depend on code, Hub allows for more maintainable systems, similar to how libraries have helped software engineer. So the main concept is these pre-trained building blocks that we call modules. Typically, we start by training a large model with the right algorithm and data. From this large model, we're just interested in into a part of it, which is reusable. This is typically a bottleneck layer or some other distributed representation. Then we can package them into a saved model that defines this computation and the weights our train and no longer depends on the original code. You can share this artifact via the file system, web servers, cloud. Then what you can bring this module back as a piece of a new model to solve a new task. Since the model is defined by TensorFlow primitives, you can fine tune its weights and adjust them to your, to, to your problem. So, what's new? For the last few months, we have been making it even easier to use. This concept of saving a part of a model and then loading it back is getting integrated right in the core of TensorFlow. We have added save model features that make it possible to share more than just signatures. And with eager execution, it becomes even easier to select the part of a network that gets exported. Let's look at a few examples. In TensorFlow 2.0, we can load a module with app.load. We can also use tf.savedmodel.load if the model is already on our file system. Due to eager execution, once loaded, we can call it right away. Additionally, due to the new capabilities, you can now share any object which is composed of TensorFlow primitives. So in this case, text features as two, uh, two members, call, which is a TF function, and embeddings, which is a TF variable. We are also really excited that we added support for polymorphic functions when we serialize TF functions on saved model. This will provide a more natural interface than we had before with signatures. For example, here we see an image representation module being loaded and then being used in inference mode, or being used during training mode where batch norm is on. Or when it's on, we can also control its, some of its parameters. And all of this is just baked by TF graphs, so we no longer need to like, be selecting things here and there. We just get all the API that looks very, very like Python. Additionally, we have added a new symbol, hub.keras layer. This makes integrating hub modules into a keras model easier. In this example, we see how easy it is to build a text sentence, class, uh, a sentence classification model. So we have three layers. Uh, the top layer, this keras layer, which is the NNLM, is a layer that receives sentences as inputs and outputs a dense representation. Then we have a dense layer and a classification layer. Since uh, the Keras layer, that we, this NNLM layer, includes text preprocessing on it, we can just feed sentences straight into our model. We never had to define the logic for it. Additionally, if we wanted to try other text models, we could just change that string. That would be as easy to try like the latest research. So the status is we have released a 0.3 version of TensorFlow Hub. It has these two new symbols we just saw up.load and up.keras layer, and they are usable in TensorFlow 2, both in eager and graph mode. 
to let you preview this functionality, we have published some modules in this format. And we, the next steps for us is to backport the existing modules. OK, uh, a bit more practical now. Google AI and DeepMind teams have been sharing their research with you on tfhub.dev. This was already launched last year, and there are some new modules, and we're going to have a look at some of those. One of the most popular was the Universal Sentence Encoder. This was a module that encoded short sentences into a high-dimensional vector that could be used for many natural language tasks. Recently, the team has added a cross-lingual version of this. So sentence with similar meaning, independent of the language, they'll end up in points close together. What's exciting about this is that now you can learn a classifier using English data, and then you could run it on other languages. We have also added image augmentation modules. The policies to augment images were trained by reinforcement learning on tasks such as ImageNet, and they have been shown to transfer to new tasks. An interesting thing is that you could grab this module and you could grab one of the image representation modules and you could string them together. In this case, the image augmentation module would reduce the amount of data by data augmentation and the image feature vector by transfer learning. And there are many more. We have BERT module for text tasks. We have object detection modules, big GAN modules for controlled image generation, Die3D kinetics for video action recognition, and more. Some of these models' architectures were specially designed for low resources. Additionally, we have been working making modules more integrated with other pieces of TensorFlow ecosystem. We have a common line utility to convert a hub module into a TFJS model. Hub models can be used together with Adenet, which is a library for AutoML. And they can also be used inside TF Transform. So if you want to try it, you can go to tfhub.dev and you can search for modules. Most of them include the link where you can see them in action. Thank you.